Well, let's talk about something that's been routinely overlooked in today's society, especially when it comes to men. Especially when it comes to men. situations where nobody is actively attacking them. Some strangers and they see ghosts. But who's out there for men? Who's out there for black men? When we need help. When we need somebody to talk to. I just had a walk outside of a Walmart. We get the shop and other people just now get tired of prison. Years, and he's telling me you know, his family. He got family in Wisconsin. He got family in California. None of them want to talk to him. Have anything to do with him? Like who? He just asked me. Just I mean, keep in mind. We are perfect strangers. We don't know each other at all. And he even says, "You know what? I don't usually do this, but." I Advice and to talk to. I know who to turn to. My family turned their back. He said he saw his, I think his auntie or something. It might have been auntie or grandma. I have to say auntie. He said he saw his auntie. He had just got out. He spoke to her. Hey, how you doing? And she looked him up and down. And she was like, Oh, uh, who's you? Somebody that grew up with had a big hand in raising her. And she replies, Who are you? So he introduces himself. I'm so and so. I'm this and that. She looks him up and down again. And he says, Oh, oh, oh yeah, and nice to meet you. And then she just walks away. Like, I mean, you don't even want to. No, has he contacted this person in the family, that person in the family? You just, you just up and walk away. So he's asking me advice on what he should do, where he should go. He feels he has nobody to turn to. He literally can literally see his eyes tearing. Literally see his eyes being red. A lot of people, you know, when a black man needs help, they quick to jump to a conclusion that, oh, well, he's probably drunk, drinking alcohol. Oh, he's probably on drugs. That's why his eyes are red. So, what? You gonna, you gonna tell me his eyes are red? But he must have allergies, even though it's Chicago and it's fucking 55 degrees? Cold breeze whistling through the air, and his eyes are watery because he has allergies. No, he's this man is literally hurt. He's torn up, and there's nobody that he can reach out to. He's already living in a shelter, and I don't know where he was. He had just got his ID because. In just about any state, in order to get yourself back on track, you need some kind of ID. Put your ID, you need a social security card. You got to have that before you can even get help. So he tells me he had the printout. It was in a bag. So my robber was bag. It was in the bag, the printout, and some clothes. So my robber with that. So now he has to start the process of getting the ID and social security card all over again. And to top it off, to make matters worse, 
they have his social security card. So now they can do all kinds of nefarious shit in his name. Get credit cards and all kinds of shit to fuck up his credit and his name even further. You see, there's no outlet for men. There's no outlet for black men in this society. And this is why I get so sick and tired of all of this gaslighting and bullshit feminist talking points that these bras like Malika Andrews and Carrie Champion and Jamil Hill, these type of bras talk about protect all women and stop victim blaming. Well, what we're not going to do is yeah, what we're not going to do is ignore the fact that there's a lot of men out here, a lot of black men out here that need help also who are routinely getting ignored even when they're trying to put their lives back together after making a mistake. You make a mistake as a man especially a black man in today's society, it's almost like a financial and socio-economical death sentence. It's almost a situation where they it's fixed so you can't even come back and put your life back together. And then to top it all off, to have your family so-called blood relatives turn their back on you talking about, oh, I don't want anything to do with you, this and that. His brother tells me he wasn't even asking them for money or shelter. So he's, if he's not asking you for money or shelter, what is the problem? What are you so, what are you so mad at? I mean, he can't even ask you information to, in order to point him in the right direction so he can help himself. And it's a lot of brothers out here like this. And you know it had to be serious for them to break this down to a complete stranger asking advice and the right direction to point him in. So who do men turn to? They need help. Everybody wants to talk about protect all women. What about when the men need help? Who can we talk to? Who can who can help us? What laws and institutions are built to protect and help us? What programs have been erected and put into action to help us? I don't want to hear any of these bullshit ass feminists these bed winches who already don't like black men to fucking begin with. I don't want to hear shit any of you hoes got to say. Shit, if it wasn't for a man, you wouldn't even have a fucking mic in front of your mouth in the first goddamn place. You had these bras like, what's the girl's name? Something Taylor. Michelle Taylor, something Taylor worked for. Her. She, she's on NBC Sports or some shit now. Was complaining how she, you know, she wanted the same amount of money as Stephen A. Smith, even though he works three times as hard as her and just about anybody on that network. Whether you believe and agree with some of the tap dance that he tends to do from time to time or not, there is one thing you can't deny that man is he is yeah. one of, if not the most hard working men on that network, the most polarizing, like it or not, the one that brings the most eyes to ESPN. So yes, he deserves the money he's getting. What the fuck does Maria Taylor get off catching the attitude because they don't want to pay her the same amount of money as Stephen A. Smith and then want to turn and blame it on, well, it must be because I'm a woman. Yeah, you motherfuckers have gotten way out of hand and way out of line with this shit. You get much more help than the average person. And the average man has no place to go to ask for help any fucking way. You motherfuckers have programs 
built specifically to help you guys out, to help you guys with housing and jobs and shit like that. Men don't have none of that. Black men need to lessen that. Y'all got some fucking nerve. Here you are, you have a brother out here with nobody, nobody to turn to, nobody to talk to, nobody to get advice from. So what does he do? The only thing that he thought would help at the time. And no, I'm not anybody special. I'm not no fucking guru. I don't know it all. He was probably willing to have this conversation with any brother that was there that would be willing to listen. All he was looking for. Some information and somebody that's willing to listen to him. See, that's too much to ask. That's too much for a man to ask. He looks like he's on the verge of depression and things like that. With nobody to turn to. And this is a common thing that a lot of men go through. That nobody wants to address. So I'll fucking address it. I'll talk about it. Because somebody needs to. So I gave that brother the best advice that I could give him. And I wish him the best. And I hope when he get back on his feet. People in your family that turn their back on you. Turn your motherfucker back on them. Fuck them motherfuckers. Pretend they no longer exist. You're better off without them. And anybody that thinks like them. For all you feminists out there and shit, got so much to say all of a sudden. Fuck y'all hoes. 304s. Even the ones in drag carrying y'all talking points for you, carrying the water for you. Fuck y'all too. Now chew on that shit.